Welcome back, fellow explorers. Today, we embark on a thrilling journey through the extraordinary aftermath of the Pyronova eruption, a colossal volcanic event that shook the foundations of Verdantara's oceans for two years, spewing a staggering 45 million cubic kilometers of magma. This cataclysmic event, known as an anoxic event, will challenge the denizens of the open ocean and push them toward a new frontier, the land. But what exactly is an anoxic event? It occurs when volcanic activity releases massive amounts of gases into the atmosphere, disrupting the delicate balance of oxygen in the oceans. As a result, marine life faces a stark choice, adapt or perish. Now, let's dive into the incredible journey of adaptation starting with the pioneers of terrestrial life on Verdantara. Meet the Chromotropici, descendants of the Chromocyanates, these organisms emerged before the Pyronova eruption. These small organisms, standing at a mere two inches tall, are the first ever life forms to take the daring leap from aquatic to terrestrial life. With wide tops and a stem, they represent a great opportunity for those that are willing to leave the water. Terrestrial organisms are those adapted to life on land. But before any organisms could make the jump from life in the water to life on land, the Pyronova eruption took place. Before we continue on our exploration of dry land, we must discuss the casualties that await in the water. One of the first clades to perish are the Abyssothrax, these large filter feeders couldn't escape the lack of oxygen, made more extreme in its deep-sea home. If they tried to move up, they would meet fierce competition from the Aqualithrax, and thus they went extinct. The Aqualithrax will survive on a knife edge, with only small populations making it through the mass extinction. The next to face extinction are the Thermolithids. These sessile organisms couldn't survive in the low oxygen conditions. And shortly after the Abyssothrax they too will go extinct. The Chimeraliths go extinct for many of the same reasons as the Thermolithids, and around the same time they go extinct. The Aqualithrax survived, but the Aquilophant won't be so lucky. They held on for quite a while but eventually due to lack of food and low population, they too will go extinct. The reefs are not without their casualties. The forolithids are sessile and cannot escape the lack of oxygen however isolated pockets will make it through the anoxic event. But the decline of the forolithids will pose challenges for the aquilodendrons. Without their main source of food, and the decline of oxygen the aquilodendrons will be pushed to extinction. And without a sufficient amount of prey combined with the lack of oxygen the serpentoforma will rapidly decline in numbers, eventually succumbing to extinction. Even as life begins to rebound the scars of extinction are still present. Before the mass extinction there was a seamless spectrum of life whereas now, we see only isolated pockets of creatures with similar features. This effect can be observed on Earth when we group animals into birds, reptiles, mammals, amphibians, and fish. In the aftermath of the anoxic event, a new organism evolves, the Terrafita, descendants of the Lanthrophyta. Growing up to a height of one meter, these organisms showcase the power of adaptation. With stiff, pointy leaves, and a revolutionary adaptation, stomata, which are able to be opened and closed to let substances in and out. All these features combined allow the Terrafita to resist dehydration. Another challenge these organisms had to face was reproduction. These organisms produce reproductive cells that can be transported by wind. Once the cells reach another planter, seed forms and is dropped. These organisms open the door for larger, more complex life forms to follow. The animals of Verdantara will be pushed out of the water. Some creatures will begin to venture onto land to escape the lack of oxygen, then finding a safe haven without predators and an abundance of food. In the aftermath of the anoxic event, the Serpentopodia, descendants of the Serra Serpentis, mark the first true terrestrial animals to evolve. With a singular pair of robust legs to hold up their long, dragging body, they face challenges like heat and stabilization. To combat dehydration, they evolve thick leathery skin, and their journey from water to land is nothing short of remarkable. The issue of stabilization was solved by evolving stiff ligaments similar to its pincers. These ligaments will form the skeleton of the creature. Their gill surfaces which in the water were locator under the fins have now evolved into a singular internalized lung, for breathing air. These creatures sport a singular digit on their feet. 
Fascinatingly, they have evolved on continents Xyranthia and Xyrophilios, but not on Xyracor, which means they will have no evolutionary influence there. Following in the footsteps of the Serpentopodia, the Aquilopods, descendants of the Aquilorynchus, make their move to land. Evolving two pairs of legs, these creatures adapt with hind limbs that evolved first as stabilizers that then transformed into limbs. Like the Serpentopodia, they boast thick skin and a primitive skeleton. However, they have two digits, which give them better stabilization when on the move. The Aquilopods approach to reproduction, evolving leathery eggs, which sever the Aquilopods' ties to the water completely. Unlike the Serpentopodia the Aquilopods are found exclusively on the shores of Xyranthia. Finally, we have the quadrupod, evolving from the filofarids. With no traditional skeleton, these creatures sport a unique hydrostatic skeleton. They grow up to 5 feet and can live for up to 2 years. Equipped with a singular lung and thick skin, they navigate the challenges of life on land, marking the island continent of Xyracor as their exclusive domain. This means that Xyracor will have flora and fauna unlike anything else on Verdantara. A hydrostatic skeleton is a flexible skeleton supported by fluid pressure. The journey from ocean to land on Verdantara is a saga of resilience and adaptation, each organism carving its unique niche in the unfolding narrative. Join us in the next episode as we explore how these newly land-dwelling creatures evolved to take over the world. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts on these incredible creatures. Your suggestions might shape the direction of our future episodes. Until then, keep exploring the wonders of Project Solara.